much love and peace to go around. So much love for the whole world on a beautiful day. You're watching Hello Nigeria. You are watching Hello Nigeria. Don't touch the dial. Hello Nigeria. Sit back and relax. Our main story today is a video concerning infidelity. A woman on the radio station, 105.2, I've forgotten the frequency, but I think it showed in the video. She basically, what happened was, she had come I out. I saw the video. You saw the video, oh. exactly. For those who haven't seen the video, we're about to play the video for you. We'll open the phone lines and allow you the opportunity to call and let us know what your thoughts are. The question is infidelity. Who, how has infidelity come to become a part of our lives. How has it come to become a part of our tradition? Is it that infidelity is now a thing that is acceptable now? Or has it always been there? Or are people actually speaking up against it as much? Because the video that came out and went viral has gotten a lot of mixed reactions, yeah. but more reactions were get towards condemning what the woman had said. Yeah. Now, the main person who first of all condemned her was Simi. Yeah. And after Simi condemned her, the blogs carried it. And then everybody was saying... I like what Simi no. said. I like that last sentence. She said, she said, if you think like this, Simi, raise up your hand. I want, I want to, to show you something. something. <laughs> We're going to play I the video something. in a bit. But I want to ask you, what, first of all, this the idea of infidelity, you know, is it? would you say that infidelity is becoming a thing now? It's something that... Some people argue that infidelity is part of our culture, that there's no such ah. thing as infidelity. And that back in the day, some of the arguments I saw in the comment section, that back, uh, you know, back in the day, our parents or our fathers were allowed to marry as many wives as they wanted yeah. without anybody clamoring for human, you know, clamoring for right their heads. Exactly. Well, so what's infidelity? So if you want to stick with one person, or if you have an agreement with three people, because I know there are some, you know, families that are polygamous, and they, I mean, they all agree to be in a polygam. Like some put on social media today, there are people who are in monogamy and they are happy. There are people who are in polygamy and they are happy. I know some families. I mean, you would never believe their rivals, the wives. I mean, they're so beautiful. They dress the same way. They are happy. That's what they want to do. But if, as a husband, you're committed to those two women, and then you have a side chick, then you're an infidel. But yeah, you, practicing infidelity. The act <laughs> of, of infidelity. infidelity. So what is, and then there's no one that has the monopoly of infidelity. That's why we always get it wrong. It's not a man's thing. It's not a woman's thing. It's a human thing. And the mistake we keep making is, oh, men are wired to, you know, be promiscuous. So in fact, let's just call it what it is. It's cheating. So people say and that... no one has a monopoly of People it. say that men, it's okay for, you know, it's a natural thing How? for men to cheat. How men are now? wired that way. How? Who wired them? Who? Who did the wiring? We should call back that electrician. <laughs> I don't get it. It's wrong. So the question I always ask is, so you have a girl and you have a boy. They are both your children. Growing up, do you notice these things in them? It's, I mean, children grow up, they have their open books. But we instill in them, we say, oh, the boy. So I saw a woman, I was talking about Bono. So Bono is one of my favorite soups. And she has a daughter. The younger boy was trying to help her sell something. And she said, no, get away from that. You can't do it. And I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. Why can't he do it? I mean, doesn't he have two hands the same way the girl does? But she just feels he can't. And then she just says, go away and play. So we build this up in them over time. And they feel, OK, so this is what I'm supposed to do. This is what she's supposed to do. Nobody's born that way. No one has a monopoly of anything, of either house chores or cheating. It's a human thing. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. So would you say that it's any different in our generation? Because we know that our parents' generation, shout out to our parents, you did an amazing work. However, there was a flaw with regard, you know, as regards um, basically raising up the male child. Mm. Because from what you pointed out, something that was very prevalent in our parents' generation, because the men were viewed as... Lord Superior, Lord Commander, Lord and King, mm. do nothing in the house. The woman does everything because you are the Almighty Lord. And your feet and are supposed to just be on the table. Whilst you are holding a newspaper and watching the and news. And there has to be a newspaper. Oh, yes, and a remote and a control. Cup, and a cup of tea. Exactly. To balance things out. <laughs> <up. laughs> so do you think that our generation is seeing things differently? Do you think our generation is doing anything differently? 
Um, well, no, you see, it's, it's still very, it's so much a strong cultural thing for us. I mean, it's still very strong a thing. So for this generation, maybe things are changing, but you hear some reactions from people, you know, it's still ingrained in them. They're okay. trying, you know, not to let us see all of it, but it's still there. So it's going to take a while to move it out. Let's hold that thought. We'll come back to speak some more about cheating and infidelity, and we'll open the phone lines to hear what your thoughts are on this matter. But for now, enjoy this video clip. Enjoy, indeed. And let us know what your thoughts are right after. <laughs> And they're cheering. So, I mean, you know, I, I'm a little worried. <laughs> the people cheering. I don't cheering. know if they're cheering, you know, out, as a form of sarcasm. You know, they're laughing at her. Sound but they're genuinely cheering her because they think it that what like she's saying. It sounds like they were in, in awe of what she was saying. So did she have some good points? Yes. But you see, the bad points so overshadow the good points that I can hardly see them. Are there issues in marriages that you can work out? Certainly. Especially she, as a necessary it's, ingredient. Of course. of course. Is the ego a man's thing? Excuse me, ma. No. Like I said, every human being, Olive, you've got ego. When push comes to shove, in your daily life, you can see it playing out. I don't know where we got this thing from. When did ego become a man's thing? Women also have egos. Uh, now, Vice President Yemi Oshiba, you just said over the weekend that we must be careful in analyzing these things and particularly pointed out that women are not subordinates to men. Again, I give you a good example. You have a baby boy and a baby girl. They grow up the same way. It is what you put into them that they begin to exhibit. A girl is not different from a boy, except for their hormones and emotions and every other thing. But ego, I mean, it's, it's for anybody. Show the woman, then say, oh, my man is a man. So it's going to be, I mean, it's going to go out anyway. I mean, but it's coming back to me, to me. So I don't care. Like someone said, let him go, let him come back, do everything this woman has recommended and get herself infected. How about that? Okay, well, this is, you know, the angle I'm also looking at it from is the fact that we're not paying attention to the mental health of a woman. We don't realize that somebody going out to cheat on you and saying, oh, let him go and cheat on you and it's come back. Okay. There's several angles to it. One, he goes, cheats on you and brings back an STD yeah. and then you, you do what? Yeah. When you, you, now, you, share when you have love. an STD with him, you have, a, you have, you know, a sexually transmitted disease. Yeah. Two, the emotional abuse involved because you start to question yourself and start to feel not good enough. Like, what is out there that makes you feel like you can blatantly cheat and rub it in my yeah. face and come home? I still want to demand to be, To have you know, food ready on the table, never complain, just keep smiling, like she said. Make sure he's well-dressed, make sure his food is ready, and just act as if nothing happened. But the funny thing is, unfortunately, if the tables were turned, nobody would ever say that to a woman. And this is because we have double standards. Yeah. If cheating is wrong, let cheating be wrong for both genders. If cheating is right, let cheating be right for both genders. When we were raising our kids, did we, did we have different standards of cheating for the boy than for the girl? Did we tell a boy, oh, you stole this pencil, but it's okay. But a girl, you stole this pencil, you must return. No, we maintain the same standards for them. If it's wrong, if it's not yours, then it's not yours. And, you know, this emphasis of saying that if he comes back, just welcome him. You guys need to talk about it because something is going on. You must talk about it. Can these issues be resolved? Certainly, yes. But if you're not talking about it, there is a big problem. And very soon, that marriage is going to collapse. Many people, people should define what is a deal breaker for them before they get into marriage and even during the marriage because yeah. sometimes you find that what was a deal breaker for you before you get you got married say last year you know might not be a deal yeah. breaker for you in the marriage yeah. but your standard of living or your standard of governing a marriage should not be the yardstick mm -hmm. so say couple a the man cheated on, on his wife or the woman cheated on her husband and they got back together and they resolved things it does not necessarily mean that so that would be the yardstick it, for couple b happen. And I think we're not we very... might not be able to take it. Exactly. And we're not being very honest with yeah. each other. Yeah. We're not being very open. There are many people that they have deep-seated wounds in their marriages. And they're so just much moving anger. through. There are just so many spouses hate the other person. I mean, you have a partner who hates the other person. But if you see them, they're glamorous. You even see them, um, I mean, they're the couple to look out for. But they, they, there's something going on. And I don't think we're even fair to men. I think for our guys growing up, we make them feel pressured. To say, oh, it's a guy's thing to cheat. And so if you're not doing it, your guys are asking you, guy, what's up with you? What's wrong with you? Why are you sitting with one person? Why, <laughs> like someone said, why are you not trying out different delicacies? We make the man feel pressured. So men who are faithful somehow feel bad that they are because society expects them not to be. Why are we making things hard for ourselves? If you guys have an issue, see a counselor, 
resolve it if we can't stay together? At the end of the day, I like that you mentioned about counsel. Or counseling is important yeah. before and even during a marriage. Highly important. I'm not married. But I'm learning from a lot of my friends that are married. And yeah. I'm reading a lot of marriage material. And by virtue of this show, I think doing this show has exposed me to yeah. a lot of information. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to pick one or two things. And one thing that I, I can say most couples always say is the fact that marriage counseling is very important. It is important. Before, and we, because you get to know yourselves. But sometimes mm -hmm. you think you know each other. But there are many things How you don't know. How could you both think you know each other? You don't know. I mean, you never, you didn't grow up together. I mean, you merely met this person some years ago. You keep finding out stuff about people. But that commitment to say, we're in this together, we're going to work it out, is important. Except for where you have physical, mental abuse. Then I would never support and it. And cheating, in many cases, yeah. is a mental it's, it's abuse. Abusive, yes. So please, what we would like to say is, can we stop making these things about a particular gender? Cheating is wrong. You know, as long as both parties are not, you know, they're not open to the idea of having, which a is which is a thing now, an open relationship yeah. is now a thing. Yeah. In fact, I saw a video. I, I forgot what they call this one. So they, uh, they, uh, both they're married, but they also have extras by the side, and those extras, some of them are also married. So it's. I like, think it's called like a polyamorous relationship. So I mean, you're just going around. Some you people say. Them over some people lunch. saying Jack Gabriel should go and blow the trumpet <laughs> already. <laughs> already. <laughs> those are some of the comments. But please, let's start trying to help bring up our boys differently to understand that what a woman cannot do. A man can't do these things. What is wrong is wrong, regardless of the gender. But that's, that's right. all that we can take. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos, when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.